All right, so in part two of our series on installing a 240 volt 50 amp line for an induction stove, which is replacing this old gas stove, we're going to be installing this four prong outlet in the floor here. So we are going to be drilling a hole in the floor for the wires to come up. We'll show this from the basement later, but there's a drop ceiling below this. We've already verified that it's safe to drill down. And then, so this, unlike most outlets on the wall that are recessed into the wall, this just sits flush on top of the floor. It is not recessed into the floor because the stove has a cutout behind it that can slide over this. Okay, so one of us is down in the basement, which had this wire that we ran in the previous video, and just pushed that up through the floor. So again, check out the link in the description if you want to see the previous video where we run this wire through both finished and unfinished parts of the basement to connect from here where we have the stove over to the breaker box in the back of the basement. So in this electric circuit, it's uh, 220 volt. And what we have here is you can see the color of the screws, two brass colored, a white and a green. The green is your ground, the white is your neutral, and these are your two hots. So you have 120, 120, and together they have 240, and that's the requirements of the stove. So you want to pay attention to the polarity when you hook it up. Um, another significant portion is the color of your wire. We have a black, a red, and a white, and a bare. So the, the black wire is one of your hot wires, goes on a brass screw. The red is your other hot wire goes on a brass screw, the white goes on the white screw, and the bare goes on the green for your ground. So you may not be able to see the fine print. This receptacle lists the wire size number 10 to number 4. Um, we're using a number 6 wire which is rated for 50 amps which falls in the specs of this plug. Another important feature is it gives you a strip gauge. It tells you how far back to strip the insulation on the wire. And the reason why that is significant is because if you strip back more insulation than you need, when this is in here, you could have a lot of copper exposed, a lot of live wire exposed, and it could short out against the ground or the neutral. So you wanna be, it's very important, you wanna be sure not to strip more insulation than you need. This way, when you land the wire, it's in there, uh, I didn't open the screw yet, but it'll fit in there securely and you won't have any exposed wire. Of wrestling with wires. Yeah. You want to make sure you understand the style of clamp that you have. This one here does come apart for convenience sake. However, if you don't have it seated properly, this plate here will push out of the clip and you only have the wire, it won't be clamped in there properly. You have to make sure that if you have these style clamps, that the plate is fully seated on both sides so that you can tighten the screw properly. And then another point is while assembling it, you can snug the screws down but when you're all done, you want to make sure that you check them because in the process of moving and bending wires, they do tend to loosen up in here. So the last thing you do is go through and check, make sure all the screws are tight. You don't want any loose connections. I want the plate to come out now and it doesn't want to come out. I wouldn't have been mad. See how easy that was? So now that the box is secured to the floor in a position where the stove will slide over it, the last two things I want to do is make sure that all these connections are tight. Tight is tight, too tight is stripped. So you don't want to over tighten it. Make sure it's snug. And then you want to fold the wires in a way where they'll fit in the parameters of the box you're working with. It's okay to have loops as long as those loops are within the size of the cover. You're all set. Okay, that's it. Okay, so there you go. We now have that outlet installed and ready to go. We are going to need to cap off the gas line when we remove the stove. That'll probably be a topic for a different video. But for now, in the next video in this series, we are going to head back into the basement and talk about installing the 50 amp breaker in the breaker box.